That Which Gave Chase is a first-person experimental horror game where you explore the Arctic tundra as a sled musher, travelling to an unknown destination with a mysterious guide. The game is available on Steam. Atmosphere. The atmosphere is filled with uncertainty and mystery for a lot of the game, and its way of presenting what's happening is extremely cryptic, with the game using jump cuts to almost disorientate the player. One minute you're moving forwards towards a wall of mist, the next you're stopped, and your guide is a near constant source of uncertainty. His words are confusing and mean very little, but still carry the weight of something heavy. You don't understand it, but it still feels ominous. He knows more than he tells you, and never tells you anything outright. The atmosphere ramps up in certain sections, with the short forays into combat feeling more intense and a sense of dread builds briefly before the next jump cut moves the story on. Though nearly everything in the game generates that feeling of dread, the way the guide looks at you expectantly, the cutscenes as you sit around the fire together, the signposts only he can read. A lot of things are framed cinematically and it works really well with the jump cuts to make the experience more streamlined. The game's second half is more menacing and supernatural, but never leaves that feeling of human fear behind. That which gave chase explains very little to you, and lets the feeling of being afraid of the things that you don't understand lurk in the back of your mind, as another jump cut takes you away to something else. That's one, Harry Mason. scares. The game doesn't really have traditional scary moments. There's some higher intensity combat sections in what could pass for a chase sequence, but these moments added more to the atmosphere than the scares. The game is mostly content to leave you alone with the atmosphere, its fear is generated psychologically as mistrust builds, but even then the game doesn't ever break into being truly frightening. That's still one Harry Mason. Sound design. Subtle, menacing music plays in the background of the sled rides. An ominous hum keeps the tension high. The sound effects are low quality but fit right in with the PlayStation 1 style. There's bitrate artifacts on the crackling of the fire and everything is just a little crunchy. There's no voice acting, just text which works well with the atmosphere. There's some sections where the game uses directional audio to allow you to identify where a threat is coming from, and there were a lot of moments where it was genuinely hard to figure that out by sound alone. The functionality worked usually, but it also didn't work well other times, making it difficult to pinpoint sounds randomly, which certainly made things more intense. There's not much in the way of sound besides the wind and the sled being pulled, but what else can you expect in a place this barren? That's two Harry Masons. Gore. There's a few bodies and the design of them is very eerie in the way they're presented. Unsettling, often left in unnatural positions. The gore is just a gaping hole in the chest and it feels like its rudimentary design would hold it back, but it's actually really unsettling. Maybe because of the atmosphere. The gore isn't great, but still somehow leaves quite an impact. 
That's three Harry Masons. Story. You've been hired to mush a sled by a scientist who wants to return to his expedition into an unknown valley somewhere in the Arctic Circle, and that's about all the setup the game gives you. The story is very hard to understand, with the guide speaking in riddles and explaining parts of accounts of things, ominous lines about events that took place, but very little details that shed light on the larger picture. You find structures, and before you can explore it, a jump cut will skip time forwards until evening, and your guide explains that it's empty. You aren't really meant to know. There are some diary entries, which were a very creepy read, with former scientists leaving half-explained notes of what they were doing, or how the conditions are worsening. The game does have some dialogue options, but it wasn't clear if they shaped the story in any way. The game has a nice plot twist near the end, and the story, whilst confusing, did a good job of being unsettling throughout, yet still feeling profound and satisfying by the end, even if the game was only an hour long. Making the final score 4 out of 5 Harry Masons. This was a really fantastic game that I enjoyed thoroughly. It scratched the itch of the fear of the unknown and the unfamiliarity of the environments and the way things were never quite explained was excellent. Again, I'd like to remind you the whole thing is down to my opinion in horror games. If you don't share this opinion, then that's cool. I get it. I'd like to point out that whilst I did pet the dogs, I did not leave them behind and advise you don't either. There will be more horror reviews in the pipeline and thanks for watching. Always go check out Bumps in the middle of the night. Peace.